I recently passed 1000 days in my Minecraft hardcore world, where I've been building some awesome projects such as a cave base, a fully automatic storage system, an epic nether portal, mob farms, crop farms, a custom nether, a wood factory, plus I've done tons of terraforming and so much more. So sit back and enjoy this epic 1000 day journey with me. This is Minecraft 1.19 Hardcore, and this is the start of a brand new series where I challenge myself to survive Hardcore Minecraft, building an epic world full of mega farms and crazy builds. So let the journey begin. But first, if you enjoy series like this, then why not join the gang and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any future videos. It's free and you can always unsubscribe later on if you wish. So I started this world like any other Minecraft world by punching a tree and... Now I just need a bed and a furnace. And that should control our hunger levels for now at least. Now it's going to probably be a long journey, so first things first, we need resources. Let's make a chest boat. And on with the journey. Is that a bamboo forest? Perfect, we'll need some scaffolding for later on. Ooh, a sunken ship. What loot do we have? Excellent, we have moss. And we might as well take the lot. I'm not sure what we'll use it for, but the helmets might come in handy. This is a pretty nice little village. I'm not really bothered about looting it too much, but hopefully they have some crops. Carrots. Seeds. Potatoes. Ooh, just one more. Can we find some beetroot? Yes, that's perfect. We now have one of each. You know what? I'm greedy, so I'm just going to take the lot. Sorry, villagers, but you guys have plenty. Okay, okay, I feel bad, so I'm just going to replant some seeds for you guys. There we go, that's fair. See, I'm a nice guy. We're going to need tons of wheat for the new packed mud blocks, so sorry guys, but I'm taking these. Well, I've travelled about a thousand blocks and not seen anything yet, so uh, I guess we'll just keep going. 2,000 blocks and still nothing. Finally, just over 3,000 blocks later and we have a mangrove swamp. Definitely gonna grab some goodies from here. Okay, time to set our base because I really don't have any room left for any resources. For the start base, I wanna go with something a little bit different like a base inside a mountain with some kind of cave. You see, I've got some ideas for the new 1.19 blocks, but it doesn't seem like we have many mountains around here, so this could take a while. Ooh, I spoke too soon. Now this is probably gonna need a lot of work, but I definitely think we could do something special with this. We also have this kind of moat around this little island here, so this would be a great spot to set up. To the side we have this big cave, which I gotta admit scares the life out of me. So we definitely need to go light this up first, so I guess we should get that done. Man, hardcore just makes me so nervous when I'm in caves. And I bet there are a ton of mobs. Come on, we got this. Uh, let's just go for it, go for it. Okay, I think it's time to make use of some of our iron and get ourselves all tooled up. Okay, I feel a little bare, but I still feel pretty vulnerable right now. So let's just keep running and just ignore those mobs for now. Come on, we got this. Ooh, this is a little different. We have an exposed skeleton spawner right on the open side of the cave. Okay, well, let's just be quick and get these chests looted before our creeper comes along. Woohoo, let's go. 
I think I've covered all the dark spots for now, so hopefully this cave should be safe-ish, I guess. Now we're safe, it's time to get some mining done. Oh gosh, I forgot how slow this early game grind is. After all that mining, it's finally time we get ourselves some armor. Let's get ourselves some leggings, a chest plate, some iron boots, and a helmet. And now it's time to suit up and make ourselves look pretty. Now I gotta say, I feel like I can take on the world. On the other hand, taking on these mangrove trees is a mission on itself. I mean, it's taken me like two hours to chop down about eight trees. That's crazy. The mangrove roots really don't help us here because they make the tree float in the air, which really kind of slows us down. Before I start building, I'm going to need to clear some of this stone out of the way. Also, some of the area around the entrance here. Around this edge here, I just want to build a little bit of a kind of sloping cliff. Kind of with a little bit of a walkway leading up at the side. Let's make a start by removing these pillars. So far, this video has taken me well over a week to record and edit, so if you're still watching, then why not subscribe? All jokes aside, I must admit, this has been a real fun start so far, but we still have a ton of texturing and detailing work to do, but so far, it's looking pretty good. The little cliff on the edge here is going to be perfect for what I have planned. Inside the cave, things are shaping up great. We still have some texturing to do, but the layout is coming together perfectly. We are still waiting for some of the grass to grow over the dirt, but overall it's looking pretty good. The slope here blends in perfectly with the cave and it's going to be a great lead up to our base. The lower area down here is going to be our crafting area. Up here will be more of the main base, probably just nicely decorated with some beds to sleep in and the first floor will probably be just up another block, but so far it's looking pretty good. Now before we start building a base we're definitely going to need a few more resources. Starting with wheat for the new packed mud block. This is going to take way too long to grow, so this might take a while. Or maybe not, I think I have a better idea. Villages have hay bales, right? So I say we rub as many villages as we can find. So I'm pretty sure that will be plenty for now, at least until our wheat grows. If we place down some dirt here, then we can use our water bowl to turn them into mud. Although this will take a while. It's not the fastest to mine either. Now we just combine it with wheat to make packed mud, which can also be used to make mud bricks. It's certainly not the fastest process, so hopefully we can find out a way to automate this at some point. Now it's time for the part I've been waiting for. Building the actual base. This is going to be fun.
Oh, I'm not going to lie. I am loving this style. And the way this sits in a little cliff, these new blocks just look so nice and they're so good to build with. I'm not sure what we'll do with this little area at the side here, but I like the way it kind of sticks out, kind of like a bit of a lookout window to the side. Taking a look from the inside is even better. I love the way this is shaping up, but this tree still needs a little bit of work, I think. Other than that, I think it's looking pretty good. The grass is still not fully grown on the side here, but as you can see, it is slowly getting there. I love the colours of the build, and I've kept the roofs all pretty low, but try to add a few of them just to really add some details. The little area over the side here is empty at the moment, but like I said, this is going to be the lookout area, so we'll do something with this a bit later on. The area down here will be a kind of crafting area for workstations and maybe some storage of some sort. Down below is the area that I've been working from. Let me know in the comments, what should we do with this area? Maybe we can come up with some kind of fun build that we can put in there. The main living area is looking pretty cozy at the moment with this little fire and sofa in the corner, but we do still have quite a lot of detail work to add in here. And it's probably best that we add in a few temporary torches just for safety. I'm not sure what to put in the side here, maybe a few workstations and some barrels of some sort. The top floor is going to be the bedrooms. Now I do still have a lot of detail work to put in place, but overall I'm really loving the layout and the way that things have shaped up. Before we start on the interior, there's a few things we're going to need. We're going to start by crafting our first diamond pickaxe. We are going to need some obsidian, so let's see if we can find some lava. This should work. Let's place some more water there. Perfect. I hate mining obsidian. It just takes so long. Ah. We'll also need some sugarcane. Paper. Bookshelves. And of course, an enchantment table. Let's also grab some barrels, crafting table, cartography table, and a smithing table. Some iron blocks, so we can craft an anvil. I think I want to use this room mostly for storage, so let's add some barrels. We'll also place some across the back wall. Back upstairs, we will add our enchantment area, so using our bookshelves, and an enchantment table. This gives us level 30, and we have a fortune free. I'm gonna grab that now, as that will come in handy later on when we're mining. Add some barrels, crafting table, and an anvil. Back downstairs, we are going to add some furnaces, smokers, and blast furnaces, and we'll also put them on the other side as well. Let's make a work table with cartography table, smithing table, and some upside down stairs. We'll add a crafting table, lectern, stone car, and some finishing details. Oh yeah, I'm happy with that. Upstairs we'll add some trapdoors around the stairs. A few trapdoors to cover up the open side of the stairs. Then some for safety up here. Let's place some wall, a couple of beds, and some trapdoors here. Let's break these and add some bookshelves. We'll place some here and add a shelf up here. Okay, so far this is looking great. And if we head on to the inside of this room, it's also looking pretty good. We have everything we need for now, so some storage to get started with. And overall, I just think this room is looking pretty good. Upstairs is looking pretty nice too. I've added some greenery around the enchantment area, but I still need to add some pictures and flower pots and just decorations for those little finishing touches. The bedroom upstairs is still pretty much the same, but it does need some flower pots and finishing touches, which I will add a little bit later on. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments what you want to see in the next episode, and I'll catch you in the next one. Today, we are back in our Minecraft Hardcore world, where last episode, we built an epic starter base that sat on a cliff inside a cave. Now, the goal for this series is to build the ultimate Hardcore world. And today, I have four goals that I have to complete. Goal number one, craft a full set of diamond tools and armor. Goal number two, turn our skelly spawner into an XP and bone farm. Goal number three, get a couple of villagers that we can breed for some projects that we have planned later on. 
And finally, goal number four is to build an epic nether portal. And I think you guys are going to enjoy this one. But first, if you enjoy series like this, then why not join the gang and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any future videos. It's free and you can always unsubscribe later on if you wish. So let's not hang around. We have a lot of work to do. And first things first, we need diamonds. Finding diamonds in game is pretty easy, but early game mining with deep slate, ugh, it's pretty slow. The good thing is last episode, we enchanted our diamond pickaxe with fortune three. So that should make the process a little bit quicker. Hey, hey, our first diamonds of the episode. Let's test out fortune three. That gave us nine diamonds, which is a great start, but we need a lot more. So I guess back to the grind. It's been a little over an hour and a half and we now have one stack of diamonds. So it's time to make some good use of them. Let's start by crafting a chest plate some leggings, boots, and a helmet. We'll also craft a sword, an axe, a shovel, and another pickaxe, just in case. Take a look at me now, hey? Looking pretty good, even if I do say so myself. So before I start the skeleton XP farm, I'm gonna need some soul sand for making the elevator drop shoot. That means we need to go to the nether first, so let's build the frame for our new portal. I want the portal to really stand out, so it's got to be pretty big, which means we're going to need more obsidian. Ugh, this part just takes so long. Okay, I'm pretty sure that should do the trick. The portal is going to be pretty big and I've worked out a really cool design which I think should fit perfectly into this area. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I have blocked off the area so that the pigmen can't jump out and walk around our base. There we go. Now let's jump straight in. Okay, so not the best spot, but at least we are not in a basalt delta, so it could be worse. So I'm not going to do too much exploring for the moment. All I really need is a bit of soul sand, some nether rack, and maybe a bit of blackstone if I can find some. Nether quartz is a great source of XP, so don't mind if I grab some while I'm here. Oh my god, that made me jump. Have that. Haha, <laughs> return to the sender in your face, ghost. Okay, we have soul sand. Now I only need one piece, but I'm just going to grab a stack for now. Ooh, blackstone. This will come in handy, so let me just grab a few. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I'm starting to get a little nervous hearing all these ghosts, so I think it's time to head back home. Now I'm back home, let's do some enchanting. We definitely need some better enchantments, and I'm gonna start with the pickaxe, as we use that the most. Fortune 3 with a question mark. But will that give us more? No, it didn't. Okay, let's grab this. And remove that. Okay, efficiency 4, that's not bad. Ooh, and we got on breaking free. Perfect. Let's combine them so that we can have fortune free as well. Let's craft another pickaxe and let's see what we get. Ugh, not much. Let's enchant the shovel instead. We'll go for efficiency two and that gives us unbreaking one as well. That's cool. We'll do some more enchanting in a bit, but for now, we definitely need some more XP. Now it's time to get the XP skelly farm in place. Before we start, we're going to need to clear a 9x9 area, so let's make some space so that we've got something to work with. Now, before we do anything else, we probably want to close this in with some walls so that we know what area we've got to work with. Now I have made a little stream that will transport the skellies up this 22 block elevator and then push them over and drop them down this little chute here. Once they fall down, they should be a one hit kill. 
Now, before we finish off the farm, I want to add some packed ice into the stream so that the skellies move a little bit faster and don't block up the system. That is going to mean two things though. XP and Silk Touch. Let's quickly see what our next enchantment is and hopefully it might be Silk Touch. No, not yet. Maybe if we enchant this axe. Okay, that gave us efficiency two. Let's try again. Let's enchant it with efficiency one and remove it. Okay, let's try again. Yes, that gives us Silk Touch, perfect. Now we need 30 levels, so let's go to the nether and mine some more quartz as that's actually a pretty quick way to gather some good XP. And we can put that in there and now we have silk touch i'm sure i saw an ice biome over this way somewhere oh wow check this out for a mangrove swamp aha we have frogs they look so derpy okay i'm gonna have to come back later with some slime so i can get some tadpoles i'm sure the ice biome was not this far away come on there has to be something nearby surely haha found it Okay, let's grab plenty and make sure we take down those coordinates so that it's easier to get back next time. Okay, we're finally back from around about 3,000 blocks journey, so at least we can finally finish off that farm now. Let's add the packed ice just across here and that should allow the skellies to slide straight into the elevator. And now we just need to add a few finishing touches. let's break these and there we go it's working seems to be running pretty quick too okay now i've got two pickaxes with the same enchantments but we could combine them i guess for efficiency five there we go awesome oof that used a lot more xp than i expected my bad for not paying attention i guess still not to worry we can easily get that back with our skelly farm Okay, levels are back up and it took me about an hour or so and we now have 37 levels, so that's all good. Before I do a resource run, I think I'm going to attempt to bring back two villagers from one of the local villages. This one will probably be our best bet because it's on top of the mountain. All being well, we can use a boat and bring them all the way down to our base. Well, this guy jumped straight in, so I guess he's eager to go. So let's see how this goes. It's a little slow, but I think this should work. Okay, about halfway now, and so far, so good. What the? I didn't look at you. Why are you attacking me? Haha, <laughs> look at you now. You're stuck in a boat, and there's nothing you can do. Never, ever mess with a guy and his villager in a boat. Okay, back on track and almost at base. And back in the boat. There we go. Now, just need to find a safe place for our new friend. There we go, all snug in the corner. Although, it seems like they lose their legs in boats. How weird. Okay, on to villager number two, so don't miss me, buddy. I won't be long. Okay, I'm just going to fill in this hole, you know, just to be safe, just to be careful. You know, certainly didn't lose, uh, lose a villager down here or anything. So, villager number two, I'm just going to call him villager number three, you know, just because it sounds better, you know. Nothing, nothing happened. It's cool. Okay, I hope this is safe. Phew, man, that kind of put my stomach in my mouth. That's it. Come on, buddy. In the boat. Ha <laughs> ha. And there we go. Perfect little family all snuggled into the corner. Next up, we need some resources and we have a rather long list. So uh, let's do this, I guess. Okay, this shovel is just way too slow. You know what? It's time for an upgrade. Okay, two efficiency four shovels make efficiency five. Perfect. That should speed things up a little bit. 
There we go. Look at that. Hmm. Don't seem like these guys can hurt me while I'm in a boat. Okay. Maybe they can a little, but not by much. Eat my sword, pillager. Now we need some rooted dirt, which hopefully shouldn't be too tough to find. Aha, there we go. That was pretty quick. Next, I need to gather a bunch of stone, andesite, cobblestone, and tuff. So maybe we should see if we can get a mending villager so that we can get our first mending book. Jeez, that took forever and certainly not the best price. So I guess I'm just going to have to get a bit ripped off. Thanks, villager. And there we go, our first mending book. But seriously, just you wait till later. 38 emeralds, who do you think you are? Okay, away from that pesky villager, let's put that on our pickaxe. And now we have some pretty good enchantments on it. While we're here, let's just repair our shovel. I'll get another mending book soon to go on there, but for now, we're just going to repair it. Now, onto the last few resources, which we can gather at diamond level. Ooh, and we have a few more diamonds. Don't mind if I do. So I finally have tons of resources and now I want to make a start on a bit of building. I've made a bit of a sloped outline for the cliff that is going to be on the opposite side. I want this to be very similar to our other cliff. So each section we're going to bring it down at the top and we're going to bring it down by about two blocks. We'll take it a block back and then bring it down by about four blocks. For the bottom section we're just going to go a block back and then just bring it down to the ground. Then we can add some details to make it look more realistic. But before we start building these cliffs, we're going to have to clear some of the stone here to make room to build. My pickaxe is in pretty bad shape at the moment, so let's get him repaired now that we have mending. There we go. Gotta love mending. That's looking pretty good, and we should now have plenty of space to work with. I will probably still be doing a bit of terraforming down here, but so far this gives us a nice space to work from. Okay, now I'm ready to get building, so I think we're going to make a start with these cliffs. So the base of the cliffs are all in place now, but we do still need to add the overhanging edges. But I think before I do that, I want to make a change to the pathways. You see, the caves are looking pretty grey, so adding in some dirt pathways will certainly add a little bit of a better colour and more contrast, just to make things stand out a bit better.
Now, this is really starting to come together. The additional cliff here has really brought in so much detail into the cave. And the bridge has really helped bring it all together, making everything feel more connected. But there's still a few details that I want to add. Doing this has certainly gave me a much better idea of how I want this cave to look. And I think it's going to be epic. But before we do any more work, I think I want to quickly do an hour mining session. As we're getting pretty low on iron and coal. If you want to gather iron or coal, then this is probably the quickest way you can do it. First, find yourself a stony peaks or stone mountain of some sort. Preferably one that's high up in the world, ideally above Y level 200, but anything above Y level 150 should do the trick. You see, the trick here is that the ores will be visible on the surface, and the higher up you go, the more ores you'll see. This means that all we need to do is gather rather than wasting time digging through stone and searching for materials. Let's see how much we can gather on this mountain in just one hour. Oh my gosh, that was an insane mining session. Just over an hour and I have gathered this much iron, this much coal, and one stack of emeralds. Now, we are well stocked on supplies, so it's time to get that nether portal in place, which I think is gonna be epic. So let's get to work. Now this is looking a pretty sick, I love it. I still have a lot of work to do and tons of texturing as I want to bring the moss up into the ceiling area to create a bit of an overgrown feeling, but so far I am loving it. Behind the nether pool, I want to do something really cool. Maybe a big area that looks like the nether so that you feel like you're actually looking into the nether from the overworld. But let me know in the comments what you guys think I should build behind there because I want to do something that's going to be really cool. So let me know your ideas. Around the cave, I want to make loads of tunnels that lead to farms and stuff. This can be made from logs and planks and maybe some overgrown areas with leaves and stuff just to kind of make it feel as if you're walking through some tree roots or something like that. Most of these tunnels will lead to other areas of our base that will have like farms or storage areas, trading halls and so forth. I will be adding one of these tunnel areas here that's going to lead to the skelly farm to make it look a little bit nicer and we're going to have some tunnels leading elsewhere as well. Now I didn't actually realise it but we are on day 178 so I've probably spent more time gathering materials than building but we're well stocked for some big projects so what do you want to see in next episode? Let me know in the comments and I'll catch you in the next one. We are already over 200 days into this hardcore world and things are starting to become a little bit of a challenge. But it's not because of the insane amount of resources we've been gathering or the crazy amounts of building. It's because we are forever running out of food and I'm starting to feel a little bit guilty every time I have to explore the local fields to find my favourite takeout. So today we're going to be building an insane crop farm that's going to be producing masses of food plus it's going to come in handy for trading with villagers so it's a win-win for sure. But before I even start that I have a mega job that I need to tackle and that is making some space and we're going to need a lot of it. So I'm probably going to be spending the next few days in real life mining because I don't have a beacon. Oh this is going to be painful.
So you see this big empty space here? This is the result of three days of work. And I'm not talking about Minecraft days here. Plus, I haven't even started gathering materials for building yet. So we got a lot of work to do. Anyway, now that's finally done, we can finally start making some progress. But first of all, we're going to need a few more supplies. Actually, we're going to need a lot more supplies. So it's probably a good idea to get a few more mending books so that we can save on our tools at least. Okay, that's one mending book. Let's trade some paper. And two books. That should do for now. I'll put those on my axe. And the shovel. Perfect. Now we just need to get some XP to repair our tools, so I'm off to the skelly farm. And with our tools repaired, it's time to gather up those supplies. I'm gonna need a crazy amount of spruce and dark oak wood for this build, so it looks like we're gonna have to take down a few of these forests. I know we're making a food farm, but I'm already getting low, so you might want to close your ears and put your fingers in your eyes while I place my order. Or the other way around. The farm is going to need a lot of glass, so let's grab some while I'm here, as the nearest desert is several thousand blocks away, and my legs delayed from all that mining. I just realized I don't even have a bow yet. So I guess with all these bows from our skelly farm, I'm sure we could probably combine a few to make something half decent. Okay, that's pretty good actually. We have infinity, so we don't need to worry about stock of arrows. Not that I'm worried about arrows. I mean, we've got a pretty good stock from our skelly farm. So my plan for the crop farm here is pretty huge. I want to have a big circle, which have all the farms going around the edge, and then a smaller circle in the middle, which is going to have a wheat farm, but it's going to be stacked on top of each other. To make this a little easier, I'm going to go ahead and get all of the foundation in place first. That way it gives us a better overview and we can see a bit more about the size and where everything's going to be laid out. So I finally got the basic foundation all in place here. And as you can see, the little curve sections here have two sections. So there's going to be two farms on each one of these little curves. And then the one in the center here is also going to have two, but it's going to be on two levels. So one below and one above. So 10 farms in total. The water streams are simply divided up with water and then slabs with some packed ice underneath, which will allow the items to flow straight across and all the way around the system. If we go ahead and just go ahead and just drop some redstone in here, we can see it gets shot out here. They simply flow down and around the system. So that means each farm is going to need two villagers. So we are going to have to start breeding our own villagers. But in here, we're going to place a bed and a composter, and then we'll be growing some crops. And the other villager is going to be stuck on this hopper here. We'll be blocking him in with a minecart. So that will keep him in there and should keep the farms running pretty smooth. But we're going to have to do some breeding and a lot more building. So I think it's time we get back to work. Before we do anything else, we're going to need a lot more villagers. So let's get breeding. Wow, that was super quick. We already have our first baby villager. I guess I should leave these guys and give them a bit of privacy for now. While our villagers are busy breeding, let's do a bit more work on our crop farms, mainly getting in some of those crops and some of the farmland all ready for them to go inside. It's a good thing we have a skelly farm because bone meal is going to come in handy here.
Okay, we are going to need a couple more things. So let me quickly repair my Silk Touch pickaxe. And then we can head to the Nether. I'm going to need a lot more glowstone so that we can keep our farms lit and avoid any of those nasty mobs from spawning. Oops, no, 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 I didn't mean to do that. Seriously, can't you guys fight fair? What happened to one-on-one? -on -one? Okay, now we need to be extra careful because I've got no idea if the rest of these guys are going to be angry with me. I think that should be plenty of glowstone to keep us going for now. But next up, we're going to need a bunch of hoppers. So I think it's about time we get ourselves an iron farm. This area just at the back of the farms here should work. Plus, we can AFK here for both the iron and for the food farm. So it's kind of a double win. So let's start by making some room. Now we've cleared the area, let's get the layout for everything all in place. The iron storage will be connected to our crop farm storage a little bit later on, but for now we're just going to set it up to go in these chests here. Okay, that's the basic killing area in place, we will be coming back to add the lava later on, but I'll do that once our villagers are all safely in place. I'm using pack ties for the spawning platforms and the waterways to keep the iron golems moving along a little bit easier. I think that's everything laid out, so now I just need some name tags for our zombies, as they need to go in place first. We can trade with our librarian to get name tags, but first we need to get him to master level, so let's get trading. And there we go, we have name tags. Now it's time to see if we can find some zombies. Come on, Dave, you have to check this out, buddy. I've got the perfect little trap for you. Just follow me in here. And if we place that there, well, there we go. He's ours. And don't forget to place a name tag. Now I just need to do that two more times. That's zombie number two. And zombie number three. And now for the fun part, add in the villagers. I'm going to try and convince them by breaking and moving a composter. Hopefully, this will go smoothly. Come on, buddy. Just follow me. Just a little further. There we go. Villager number one. Now we just got eight more to go. So, yeah, this might take a while. And finally, villager number nine all in place. I think that's everything in place now. So let's add our glass. And, of course, the lava bucket. And we can add in our waterways using ice. Okay, looks like everything is working. So we can just AFK here for plenty of iron now. So hopefully this should be good. Now, I think it's about time that we finish up this farming area. All we need to do now is add hopper minecarts into each villager farm. There we go. And again, we've now got to move a bunch of villagers into the farm. So again, I'm going to go with the composters as this seems to do the trick. Let's do this one at a time.
that's all of them in place now and surprisingly again that was very smooth okay this area is looking great and we still have some extra room for some additional farms that we can add later on but for now we've got to add some finishing touches so that we can make this place look beautiful So we're going to work on the storage system next, but so far I think this is looking pretty sick. The Skelly Farm area is so much better and maybe a few more details here and there, but overall I'm really happy with the look. The farming area itself has turned out way better than I expected and I'm loving that feel as though you're kind of inside some huge tree roots. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Now the storage system is going to be at the back here, but it's going to sit down a few more blocks. So it's going to be on a lower level, so you'll have a little stairway going down to it. So first of all, we need to clear a bit of the area. So let's make some room so we can get this in place. Now the storage will be repeated in sections. So let's start off with the first one. First, we will put in some pillars and then some stairs for details. I'm gonna use barrels for storage so that we can minimize on lag. And then we just add a few finishing touches. And there we go, that's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and repeat down all the sections all the way around the room. With that all connected, let's get our redstone set up, which is going to be pretty simple. We'll start by adding hoppers to the back of the barrels. Behind the top hopper, we want to place our blocks like this, and then we can extend these ones. Add our repeaters here, and then connect the rest of the blocks across. We'll place in our comparators, and the redstone dust. Place redstone torches underneath, and hoppers going into the comparators. Then we can run hoppers just around the top edge of the room. And of course, we just repeat this all the way around. With the redstone all in place, now we just got to add the final part of the system and then finish off the detail for the ceiling of the storage room. To set up the auto storage, we're going to first rename some dirt. Then we're going to add them to the hoppers in these four slots with a stack of the items you want to sort. It should stop at 41. For now, we will sort wheat, beetroot, potatoes, and carrots. And for now, I'm just going to section all of the other sections off with our dirt. We will also add an area for our iron and our poppies from our iron farm too. And there we go. We finally have it all set up. Now, as you can see in the center of the storage room here, you can actually see the items going up through the glass here. This is going up into the storage system. And I just thought this was a really nice little detail and a little feature for inside the storage room. Just something I like to do, which I haven't done for a long time, but is a cool little feature. 
Now, overall, guys, this place is looking amazing. I absolutely love everything that we've done in today's episode. I'm really happy with the way things are shaping up. And I have got some great ideas for next episode where we're going to be adding a lot more builds into the cave and also doing a bit of work on the outside of the caves. So let me know in the comments, what do you want to see me build in next episode? And what are your ideas for what we have so far? Are you liking it? Or do you think we should do some other stuff? Have you got some cool ideas yourself? Let me know in the comments and I'll catch you in the next one. It's been 340 days since I started this hardcore world and I've gathered tons of resources, built some awesome cliffs, made some more mag farms and finished our starter house. But today I have something different planned. You see, I know those creepers are out there lurking around every corner just waiting to catch me off guard. So today, it's time we level up our game. I mean, this is a hardcore world after all, which means we only have one life, so we could easily lose everything at any moment. So it's time we get some safety measures in place. Now, I'm thinking a raid farm would be perfect for unlimited totems and emeralds. Plus, upgrading to fully enchanted netherite tools and armor would definitely help us on the path to becoming overpowered. So, what are we waiting for? Let's do it. I guess we should head to the nether first as I want to get the netherite mining out of the way. I mean, it's not like I haven't mined enough already, right? So, I think we need to get down to around Y level 15 to get the most netherite, so hopefully that speeds up the gathering time. I've done my fair share of mining, but not netherite mining, so here goes nothing. Well, that was quicker than I expected, our first piece of netherite. Okay, I've been mining for about an hour and a half and it's starting to get a little bit boring. I mean, I've only found 12 ancient debris so far, so I think it's time we mix it up a bit. I never really play with TNT, but that's got to be a lot more fun than mining like this. So we need some gunpowder. And I mean a lot of gunpowder. So I think the best way to do this is by building a mob farm. Then we can have all the gunpowder we dream of, plus we can get the other mob drops too. Now, I will need a few things for this build, but I'm pretty sure I already have most of the resources ready to build this. Now, the farm is best built above deep waters, so that no mobs can spawn around it, which improves the drop rates. I think building it here should be perfect, as we're not too far from our base. And before we get started, this is not my design, it is a Nembom farm, so I'll leave a link in the description, but it's probably the best mob farm out there. So, let's get to work. Okay, let's just add our soul campfires to the killing chamber and our water buckets for the mob collection area. With that all in place, it's time to get in the platforms. Now we're gonna be putting in about 10 platforms with slabs and there's gonna be a two and a half block gap between them all. So good thing I'm not afraid of heights. So the farm is all in place and working like a charm. So I guess we should test it out and do an AFK session for a couple of hours to see how many drops we get. Okay, it's been a little over two hours, so let's see what we have. Oh my gosh, look how much gunpowder we've got. Just over one double chest, that is crazy. Just look at these drops. Well, that's way more than I was expecting. Excellent. Well, I'm almost ready to blow the nether apart, but first we're going to need to craft some TNT. That means we're first going to need some sand. And now we can craft some TNT. Three and a half stacks should do for now, I think. Okay, time to make a mess. Let's go.
Okay, that should be plenty of ancient debris for now. So I think it's time we head home. So if we add these to the 12 that we got earlier, that leaves us with 47, which is plenty. But before I go adding that to our armor and tools, I think we should work on some enchantments. I'm going to focus our enchantments on getting trades with our villagers, as I think that will be more beneficial for future trades. If I'm going to make a raid farm, I will need a good sword, so we're going to probably need Sweeping Edge 3, Looting 3, and Sharpness 5. For our armor, we need some Protection 3 or 4, Unbreaking 3, and maybe some Efficiency 5 for a couple of our tools as well. So I guess it's time to get trading. Looting free for 15 emeralds? Awesome, I'll take it. Sharpness 5 for 28 emeralds? I guess that will do. Efficiency 5 for 62? Ouch, dude. I guess I'm just going to go over here because this is taking so long. Ooh, I'm breaking free for 13. That's pretty good. Definitely taking that. Oh my god, finally, protection free. It's not perfect, but I think we can combine two books for protection four. Yes, we can, so that will do. We'll put that on our chest plate and unbreaking free. Now, before we start the raid farm, I'm first going to need a good sword. So we're going to need to add a few enchantments to this first. Let's start with Sweeping Edge 3. I'm also going to need Loot in 3, Sharpness 5, and Mending. But looks like I need a few more levels. Now we can add Mending. Let's quickly repair our sword. Aha, much better. Now, before I can enchant the rest of my gear, I'm going to need lots of emeralds and for security, plenty of totems. So let's get building this overpowered raid farm. This farm will actually be perfect just next to our mob farm. So while we're using our raid farm, we can also be getting mob drops at the same time. So it's a win win. Now, I have done some testing and this farm is pretty insane. It's designed by ENX04, so I'll link the tutorial below the video. Anyway, enough talk, let's build it. Now we finally have the farm all in place, but first we need a villager and he's going to just sit in this little box down here and the raiders are going to spawn on the platform up there. But we will do testing once our villagers all in place. Luckily, there's a village not too far from here. I think it was over this way a little bit. Aha, there we go. Now we just need a villager. Hey, come back here. Haha, <laughs> got you now. Now I just need to head towards the water. It's not the fastest form of travel by any means, but it works. And we are there. Woohoo! Now we just need to give this fella a new home. There you go, buddy. Now we almost have everything we need except for one thing, and that is Bad Omen. So it's time to head over to a villager outpost. Admittedly, this is a little bit further away than I would have liked, and we do need to be careful because there are a couple of villages on the way back to the farm, so we're going to have to make sure we don't get too close to them because the last thing we want to do is set off a raid at the village. Okay, it did take me about five minutes to get here, but that will be a bit quicker once we get our wings. But for now, we need to find a captain. Let's see what they have in here. Ooh, a goat's horn. Nice. Jeez, these guys are so dumb. 
Come on, send me out your captains. I need bad omen. Or is it mad omen? I'm not sure anymore. Oh, I see. That's how it is. Well, I guess I just have to take you out one by one. Haha, <laughs> you're all alone now. Okay, let's get back to our raid farm for some raiding. Hopefully this works well. Okay, here we are. And there's the raid Mia, so let's jump up the bubble column. I hear a horn, so that's a good thing. Let's flick the lever and simply take them down. Well, that was super easy. Let's see what we got. Okay, some items are still filtering through the hoppers for the item sorters, but we do have plenty of emeralds and totems. And we do have bad omen again from our raid, so let's jump down, start another one, and repeat the cycle. Okay, I've done a few raids now, and already we have loads. So let's take some of the totems and some of the emeralds back to base. Time to make use of those emeralds and buy plenty of books to enchant our gear. Okay, so first it looks like we're going to need some books. Let's grab our leather and some sugar cane, craft that into paper, and now we can make some books. Let's grab some protection free books. I'll also take plenty of unbreaking free. We'll definitely need a few mending books. And for now, I'll take one efficiency five book. Okay, let's get some enchanting done. Let's start by combining protection books so that we can get protection four. We'll put mending on our chest plate. On our leggings, we'll put protection four, unbreaking free, and mending. And on our boots and helmet, we only have enough XP for mending. So I guess we should head back to our raid farm so that we can get some more XP. Okay, that should be enough to finish up our enchanting for now. Now I have most of the enchantments that I need on my tools and armor, so I think it's time that we upgrade them to Neverite. Let's upgrade our chest plate, leggings, boots, and helmet. Cover me in debris, achievement unlocked. And now for our tools, let's upgrade the sword, our fortune pickaxe, shovel, axe, and finally our silk touch pickaxe. Look who's looking rather shiny now. All we need now is just a couple of bodyguards. Okay, now it wouldn't be a blue nerd video without some kind of building, so it's time that we make this cave look pretty and make it feel a little bit more like home. Okay, this has turned out way better than I expected. I love this little lake here with the kind of little shack at the back. Probably a good place for a storage system or maybe a villager trading hall. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Now the cave is starting to feel much more alive and much more detailed and certainly feels more like a place that I would want to live. 
Now I am also working on a castle design, which I think is gonna be awesome and it's gonna be on top of the mountain. Now I still gotta do a bit more planning in the creative test well to come up with a few more ideas, but so far I think I have a cool idea in place, but still gotta get some more of the details ironed out before we can build it. But I think it's gonna be awesome. Now I was thinking about building something somewhere below the base, somewhere deep into the caves and something that's maybe a bit of a magical area, maybe something that kind of explains a bit of a history or a story behind what we've been building, you know, kind of making up a bit of lore along the way. I've never done that in a world before, but I think it might be a cool idea just adding, you know, little small things here and there just to create a bit of a backstory. So if you guys have some ideas, let me know in the comments below and I'll catch you guys guys in the next one last episode i became overpowered by again fully enchanted neverite armor and building a raid farm for unlimited totems but you know what is not overpowered the outside of my base yeah i mean it kind of hurts just to look at it to be honest in fact this entire mountain needs some work so today i will be completely transforming this place into something epic so be sure to stick around because you won't recognize it when i'm done now i have been so focused on building the ultimate hardcore world that i kind of forgot about facing the dragon and it's like day 450 so i think it's about time that we show her who's boss around here plus i really need some wings because i'm kind of getting a little bit tired of running everywhere so I guess the first thing we need to do is get some eyes of Endar. So let's head into the nether because I'm definitely going to need some blaze rods. I'm pretty sure there was a nether fortress pretty close to our portal. Aha, there we go. Now I just need to find a safe way across. Okay, well, I guess I'm just going to have to make my own pathway. Just a few more blocks and there we go. We made it and another advancement off the list too. Okay, finding some blazes around here should be easy enough. Ooh, a blaze spawner. Even better. Okay, I think that should be plenty. Plus, any extras will come in handy for brewing potions. So, let's head back home. Next up, I need a brewing station so that we can get a cleric villager. Anyone want a job? How about you, my friend? Ooh, this guy trades zombie flesh, which is super handy because I have tons of that at our mob farm. This farm is so awesome. Look at all these drops. Okay, let's grab as much as we can for now. Now, if I can just get him to an expert level, then we can get some enderpearl trades. Apparently, he's an expert now, so let's take some of those enderpearls. I'm going to call this guy Rick because he's a cleric. Get it? Oh, what am I doing to myself? That was a terrible joke. Anyway, moving on, let's craft some blaze powder and now we can make some eyes of ender. Okay, that means I also have the materials for an ender chest now, so uh, let's make one. I'll grab these golden carrots and apples and maybe a few more golden apples just in case. I don't think I'll need them, but best to be safe. Okay, so which way is the end portal? Aha, that way it is. Hopefully it's not too far away. Fingers crossed. Okay, looks like we're still on track. Okay, now it's going the other way, so we must be close. Aha, there we go, it's down there. Okay, I think I'm getting close now. Aha, stone bricks, there we go. Now, let's find the portal. It's probably a good idea to be safe and light the way. Okay, I found the library, but I'm going to come back later for the bookshelves. Okay, I think I found it. Let's get rid of that. And to be safe, I'm going to get rid of the lava. I don't want to burn my butt on the way through the portal. Let's place our eyes of Ender and see what's on the other side, I guess. Yes, and she's down. You know, I used to always struggle with a dragon fight, but I think the more you do it, the easier it gets because it's definitely less of a challenge to beat her now. Anyway, let's grab the dragon egg 
And for now, we're going to quickly head back home so that I can clear my inventory. Oh, man. Looks like I forgot to set my spawn point. Well, looks like I have a 3,000 block journey on foot. <laughs> Fun times, eh? Well, at least I memorized my base coordinates, so it could be worse. After a long old journey, we're finally back home and I've cleared my inventory, so I guess it's time for some end raiding. For my own safety, I made a stairway up to the portal, as we can't be too careful. Okay, well, let's do this. Whoa, my gosh. Now, this is definitely an odd spawn point. Um, I best be careful getting down here. Okay, let's find an NC. Well, that was pretty easy. This is our first NC, but it doesn't look like it has an end ship. But I'm pretty sure it does have some shulkers, so let's grab some blocks. And slowly peel her over the void. Man, my stomach sinks every time I do this. Now it's time to loot the sea. Not bad, but I really need an end ship so that I can get the Elytra. Ah, this one will do, and it's definitely got a ship. And we are across to the end ship. Let's get rid of you. And I'll take the brewing stand. Thank you. No, no, no. You're not gonna. Ugh, seriously? Well, down you go anyway. And finally, we have the Elytra. Excellent. Time for that good old leap of faith. This is gonna make things so much easier. I think that's enough loot for now. So let's head back home. First thing I'm gonna do is enchant our Elytra. Let's add some mending. And of course, I'm breaking free. Now I just need to craft some shulker boxes. Now, before I start building, it would be helpful if we had a respiration free. So I do have some villagers without jobs. So let's get some more trades. Oh, protection four. Don't mind if I do. Yes, respiration free. Perfect. Oh, feather fallen four. That's going to be perfect for while I'm building. Still touch. Well, that's definitely going to come in handy. So let's grab that too. So let's put feather fallen on our boots, respiration on our helmet and still touch on our axe. Now, I just need a few more bits before I can start building. Oh boy, that took me way longer than I expected, but I think I have everything I need now to finally make a start on transforming this mountain. So let's get to work. Okay, I got a little bit carried away with how big I wanted this to be, but 
so far, I think it's actually shaping up pretty good. I mean, it's really transformed the entire look of this place already, and we haven't even started with the mountain. I think I'm going to extend this cliff around this edge here so that we can add another building. Up on this cliff at some point will be a village, so we're going to need to make our way up to it, but I've still got to terraform some of the land around it as well. Now, there's still loads of work to do, so well, let's get back to it. So I think I've got most of the terraforming on this side of the mountain all in place. I've extended that cliff across the edge there so that we've got room for another building. And we now have a walkway leading up here which will later on be a village of some sort. Now there's still tons of work to do on this side of the mountain. At some point I will be building a huge castle somewhere around here. But to do that I'm going to need to dig away several layers off the top of this mountain which is going to take me an insane amount of time so to speed this up I think it's about time that we get that beacon. So that is going to mean taking on the wither so that means we're going to have to head back to the nether because we need three wither skulls. Ah this should be fun. Man you guys are so annoying. Now we finally have three wither heads, so you know what happens next, right? Well, that's good, because I don't. So I guess we just place down our three heads and uh, hope for the best. I guess we start with a bow. Come on. Okay, he's down to half health. Let's start with our sword. Yes, we did it. Now, I'm not going to lie. That was nowhere near as tough as I remember it being. But it has been a while. Anyway, we have our Never Star. So now what we need to do is craft a beacon. Haha, <laughs> there we go. Okay, let's place our full power beacon up here. So let's just add our iron blocks. And we will add haste too. Okay, I started digging off the top of the mountain and I kind of realized that there is way more to dig away up there than I thought. So I think I'm going to save that for a bit later. But our beacon will definitely come in handy as we still have loads of terraforming to do down here. So I guess it's time we get back to transforming this mountain.
my gosh, this episode has taken an insane amount of work so far. But I got to say, I'm really glad the terraforming is out of the way now because that was a huge job. So next, I want to upgrade my star house and just add another building over the side here. But before we get back to work, let's have a quick look at our stats. Wow, I've mined pretty much 90,000 stone blocks. That's crazy. And well, you can see just how much stuff we've been gathering. There's a lot of resources here. So there has honestly been an insane amount of resource gathering for this series so far. I think I've spent more time gathering resources than anything else, but I'm really happy with the way things are going. Okay, let's get back to work on those final details. Wow, I cannot tell you guys how much I love the way that this is shaped up. It has turned out so much better than I expected and I just love the feel to the place now. It feels like a completely different place. Now, I'm not going to lie, I have spent the last three weeks working morning till night on this episode alone. So if you did enjoy it, then why not subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any future videos. And as always, a like is much appreciated. Now, let's take a wander around and have a look at what I've done. First of all, you can see I have changed my starter house and I just kind of made it so that it fits better into the cliff. It's not a huge change, but it's enough to make a difference and just to make it feel a little bit nicer. I've also completely done up the interior, so it looks much better now and we have way more room. I absolutely love this little bridge down here. I think it looks really cool, but I am struggling to come up with ideas for what to go on the little island. I'm not sure what's going to fit on there properly. So if you guys have any ideas, let me know in the comments what you think I should build on there. Now, the outside of the cave has been completely terraformed and I've textured all the walls. And I'm not going to lie, it took me so long to do, but my gosh, was it worth it in the long run? I have also added a nice little house just down at the side here. We've also got this little waterfall and pond and just generally a lot of details just to make the area look nice. On the other side here is mostly decorative with a pond and lots of foliage and trees all over the place just to bring the area to life. If we continue around that leads us to a walkway which leads up onto the cliff that we built earlier. Again there is going to be a village of some sort up here at some point. I'm not really sure of the style just yet so that will come a little bit later on. But for now I think this area is looking really cool and I just like the way that everything is laid out. It's all organized and ready to go. Now, we'll of course be building a huge castle very soon on top of the mountain. And in order to access it, you will have to come through the cave, across the bridge, around the cliff, and along our new walkway, which will go all the way up to our castle, once it's all in place, of course. As always, I hope you guys have enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you in the next one. This is my nether pool, and this is the actual nether, but I can't see anything through it. So today, I'm going to change that by building my own custom nether right behind it so that it looks like we're actually looking through to the actual nether, all in hardcore Minecraft. So this is probably going to be my most insane build yet. And as you know, insane builds take crazy amounts of resources. So I'm definitely going to need some more shulker boxes. Finding end cities is so much easier now that we have the elytra. Here we go, time for some shulker hunting. Okay, now, if you guys could stop shooting, that would be great. 
Like, seriously, these guys hate me. Awesome, a great view up here. Nice, that's another one off the list. Well, getting shot by these shulkers does have its perks, I guess. Okay, that took me several hours. But I should be able to craft enough shulkers now. Gathering Neverwall on Warp Tool is so slow. Unless you have a good enchanted hoe, of course. My grubby old diamond hoe is looking a little worse for wear, so let's give it an upgrade. Let's add Unbreaking Free and Mending together. Let's try adding Looting Free as well. Okay, 9 XP, that's not too bad. We lose looting, but that's fine, I guess. Looks like I'm down to my last two Neverite ingots. Well, only one now. Let's also grab an Efficiency 4 book. Now I'm gonna need some XP. And down goes the Raid Captain, and off to the Raid Farm for that XP. Probably a good idea to top up the gunpowder while we're here. Now, let's add that Efficiency 4 so that we can get Efficiency 5. And upgrade to Neverite. Serious dedication? Nice. Let's quickly grab some food. And now I'm ready for some grinding. Hey, I told you to behave. Fine, ah. you asked for it. Okay, I think that should be enough for all the crimson materials. But it looks like these are the last of my rockets. So I guess I should really make a small temporary farm for sugarcane. I have plans for building a much better version later. I mean, I'm going to be needing a lot of paper. I will definitely be building something more automatic a bit later on. But for now, this should give us enough paper to get on with. And another pillager captain down. And off to the raid farm again to repair our tools. There we go. Good as new. Let's head back to the nether for a few more materials. So for this build, I'm going to need a ton of resources, meaning I'm going to need blocks from all the biomes, including the Warped Forest, the Crimson Forest, the Soul Valley, Basil Dewa, and even the Piglin Bastions and the Nether Fortress itself as well. So it took me a few days to gather everything. Okay, I think that's most of the Nether materials gathered. I'm pretty sure I should have plenty to build with now. I think the only other block I need now is Deep Slate. Oh, I forgot how slow mining this stuff is. Actually, what if I take this beacon and I place it down here? There we go. That should speed things up. Yeah, not that much, actually. Oh, well, this is the fastest I can go, so let's get on with it. Oh, boy, I completely forgot that I need to dig the arrow out behind the portal. Man, that's not going to be fun. Like, you guys know how much I love mining, right? Actually, before I do that, I think I just want to make a few changes to the portal design. Just to make it stand out a little bit more. Okay, okay, I completely changed it. But design-wise, it's only a small change. And it looks so much better now. Okay, I just repaired my tools yet again at the raid farm. Honestly, I've actually lost count how many times I've done that in this episode. But I seriously must thank Mojang for mending. Now it's time for that big hole. Uh, yeah, I heard myself. I mean, yeah, moving on. Why do I always build these things underground? You know, I really should start building above ground. It's probably a lot less work that way. Well, at least I have a beacon. Man, it looks like I'm mining so fast, but I still feel like progress is so slow. Well, a day and a half later, several raid farm pickaxe repairs, and more tears than I care to admit. But it's finally done, and I have a layout full of walls that I think should work pretty nicely. This is going to be a custom never, so I guess it only makes sense to use never rack, right? Hey, 
Haha, <laughs> finally, that stone is all hidden. Well, there's still the floor, but I'm good with that. So I still need to add a few details to the walls a bit later. But so far, I think we've got a pretty good shape. But now it is feeling kind of empty in here. So let's start building some of the terrain so that we have something to work from. Well, we still have lots of work to do, but at least we have some shape now. So my plan here is to build a custom crimson forest, a warped forest, a cool entrance around the nether portal, and down there I want to add a kind of soul valley basalt delta type biome thingy. I don't know, but it'll look cool when it's done. So let's start working on that next. My gosh, that's a lot of torch spam. I'll remove them once I get the hidden light in, lava pools and lava streams all in place. There is going to be a lot of lava, but I'm definitely going to do that last. Okay, there's still a long way to go, but it's certainly shaping up. I actually have this cool idea for a bridge and make it lead across to a nether fortress at the back. Actually, I think that will look pretty sick. You know what? Let's do it. Okay, I made a little bit of a derp. Somehow, I crafted all of my blackstone into blackstone bricks, but I need polished blackstone. And I can't craft it back. So I guess I'm going to need to go get some more. These ghasts better appreciate all my work. I mean, they're not going to see my build, but they better appreciate it. Okay, that should do. So back to the nether. Like the other never. Uh, the one inside my base? Yeah. Oh man, this is looking pretty sick. Now I didn't want to over detail as I still want this to look like the actual never, just with kind of a bit of an upgrade. I must admit, I really like this bridge design. Yeah, it's simple and I probably will make a few small changes, but I think it's pretty good. Next, I want to do something around the pool. Maybe something similar to what we have on the other side, but with materials from the actual never, because this is the never, I guess. Well, that definitely adds some life and I love the way that these trees are shaped up. I tried to make the crimson one look more like trees and the warped ones to look more like mushrooms. But it still needs some more work. Maybe some mini mushrooms using some end rods for lighting. And then we can remove the torches. Uh, yeah, that actually looks really nice. But it still needs something else. Maybe a little bit of bone meal. You are in the wrong place, buddy. Get out of here. Perhaps a few twisting vines and a little bone mill. And we can stop them ground with shears. Let's add a little bit more detail to these walls. Now that is more like it. I definitely like the way this is starting to look. Maybe we can add some red mushrooms for the crimson side. Let's place some bone mill. And maybe some hanging vines will make this place feel more neverish. I guess. Oh yeah, this place is looking nice now. Ah, that's where my scaffolding went. 
Ooh, what about a couple of prison cells hanging from the ceiling? Oh yeah, this is really starting to look awesome now. Next, I want to add some details down here. Neverwall should definitely help bring in a bit of colour. And while that's growing, let's finish up some of the details. Man, I love the vibe as you can walk in through here. It's so cool. You can actually get a much better view of the prison cells from here. What the? Really? Those endermen are a pain in the butt. So the Basil Delta Soul Valley type biome is all in place now. And I gotta say, it's looking pretty good. This side, I made some kind of bone structure hidden into the dirt. It's not over detailed, but I think it works. I plan on filling this bottom area here with lava. So using these little pools here should help me avoid burning my butt. Fingers crossed, but no promises. Now for the painful part, which is going to be filling up and placing the lava buckets. I have about 60 buckets, but this is still going to take a while. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 no. Oh my gosh, I thought I was dead there for sure. Ooh, not sure how I survived, but I did. Ooh, let's not make a habit of doing that. Man, this is taking forever, but we are about two thirds of the way done. Jeez, so far I've used 611 lava buckets. Wow. I wonder how many it will take in total, including all the lava streams. Oh yes, and finally I think this is the last one. What a huge project this has been. These biomes are looking absolutely awesome. I think it definitely feels like the Never, just with a little bit of an upgrade, as I didn't want to transform it too much. And as you can see, it really does look like we are actually looking through to the actual never now, which I think looks really, really cool. The only question now is, how can we make use of this fortress? Hmm. Recently, I've been taking on some huge projects in this Minecraft hardcore world, and it's been super fun. Well, that is until this happened. Okay, where is all my spruce wood? Come on, I'm sure I must have left it in one of these. Did I put it in here? Maybe in here. Ah, oh, seriously, this is getting ridiculous now. Yeah, things are starting to get a little bit unorganized around here. So today, it's time we get ourselves organized with a fully automatic storage system with an awesome Axolotl Aquarium in the center. All in hardcore Minecraft. But before we get started, less than a quarter of you watching are actually subscribed to my channel. So if you do enjoy my content, then why not subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any future content. Okay, so today is going to be another crazy build. So before we get started, let's see if we can find a good spot for building. Ah, this should be perfect. But I think building the village up here would look awesome. So maybe building this one under the cliff would be best. That way we can still build an awesome little village above it. So that is going to mean a lot of digging again. So... Beacon down. And time for some terraforming and digging. Let's do this. So 
so I'm about halfway through the mining at the moment and I think it's time for a little break. Plus, I don't think my tools can take much more. So it's probably a good idea that we repair them. Oh wow, it's not often that we find a pillager captain straight away. Sorry buddy, but I need bad omen. Okay, tools repaired, so back to mining. You know, the mining process really doesn't bother me, but my tools just burn down so fast when I'm mining with a beacon. I mean, I've already repaired my tools like six or seven times now, but I guess that means I'm working hard. At least that's what I'm telling myself. Okay, well that's the easy part done. Now I need to try and clear some of my shoulder boxes. Yeah. And of course, another hole means another chest monster. Jeez, I'm gonna have a lot of mess to clean up. So the automatic storage system is gonna have three sections on each floor. Each section will hold around 42 items. And we have two floors, so that's just over 250 items. Plus we can expand this as much as we want later on. So I guess I really should get to gathering those materials. For a change of color, I really wanna try out some terracotta for the walls. So I guess the first thing we need is a mesa. No mesa yet, but we do need some acacia. So this savannah is good as any. Trust me, it's going to look awesome when it's done. Okay, that should be enough. And I'm out of rockets. Good thing I always carry spares in my ender chest. I mean, I'm like 4,000 blocks away from my base. So yeah, that would have been a fun journey. I am so far away from home right now. There must be a mesa around here somewhere. Aha, finally! Gosh, that took like 30 minutes to find. Let's just gather everything. All the terracotta colors. Oh, wow. I can't remember the last time I looted one of these. Yeah, still not worth it. Let's just rub all this sandstone instead. Who needs a temple anyway? We always need sand for glass, so let's stock up. What could I build with red sand? I'm gonna just take some anyway. Oh wow, this mesa is way bigger. I must remember to take down these coordinates so that I can come back later. Ah, red terracotta too. Now you're just spoiling me. Okay, let's just smelt some glass as I'm gonna need some of that later. And now I need a ton of redstone. And not just for the red dusty stuff, but I need repeaters, comparators, and redstone torches. And to top it off, I need about five stacks of each. So that's a lot more redstone than my brain can calculate. Using a beacon has to be the fastest way to gather this. I mean, there's less redstone on this level, but I can mine super fast. It has to be quicker than mining through deep slate, surely. Okay, either I'm real unlucky or this is just a bad spot for redstone. Like four stacks in about an hour and a half. And I'm using my fortune pickaxe. Maybe deep cave mining will be better. This is more like it. There is so much iron down here. I mean, I have an iron farm, but seriously, I can't help myself. And diamonds. Yeah, like that's what I need right now. Oh, look what I just found. I really want to explore it, but I'm not sure I've got the guts, to be honest. But it is so tempting. I can't. I'm just, I'm not prepared right now. Okay, maybe just a quick look. Oh my gosh, did I just set sign off? Oh no, I know what that means. Let's go quick, 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 quick. Damn, I nearly killed myself flying into walls. Yeah, that was kind of stupid, but I'm not going to lie, that was kind of scary. Seriously, like, what is wrong with the mobs in this game? Hey, a lush cave. Well, at least I don't have to tiptoe around here. Hopefully, we can find some axolotls in here. So let's craft a few buckets just in case. Ah, spore blossoms, nice. Hang on, I found a load of these a while back. I wonder what ever happened to them. I have no idea, but I guess I should gather some up while I'm here. Did I just hear an axolotl? 
Yes, I did. Awesome. Hey, dude, what's up? Uh, why won't he go in the bucket? Haha, gotcha. That was weird. Okay, I can hear another one. But where is he? Aha, there you are. Gotcha. That's two. Tropical fish? How weird to spawn down here? And gotcha. If we can find some more, then we can make some babies. Oh, pretty pink one. And you're mine. Let's quickly repair our bow. There we go, good as new. I think we should have enough redstone now. So, let's craft some redstone torches. Comparators. And finally, repeaters. Now I'm going to need a ton of logs so that I can craft them into planks. We can then craft them into chests and use the chest to craft hoppers. And I need about 40 stacks of hoppers. So yeah, that's certainly more maths than my brain can handle. I've been chopping trees down for several hours now and I think that I finally have enough. Let's craft up all the chests first. Wow, that wasn't even close to enough logs. So um, back to chopping trees, I guess. Okay, I'm pretty sure that I've got enough logs for all the chests now. Now I need to craft them into hoppers. I mean, I need 40 stacks of hoppers. And each hopper uses 5 iron. So that's about 200 stacks of iron ingots. Oh boy, that's a lot. It's going to be close. Very close. Oh wow, that was so close, but we did have just enough iron for all of them. Now I just need a bunch of barrels and then we should be ready to start building. I think I have everything I need now, just other than spruce and dark oak logs, as I pretty much used all of them for crafting the chests and the barrels. Okay, finally, it's the fun part, so time to start building. So I did go ahead and make a little bit of a layout. As you can see, we have three sections for storage. And there's two floors, so that makes six sections in total. Each section is going to hold about 42 items, so that should be plenty of space for now. But we can always extend it later if we need to. This little hole in the center is going to be where the Axolotl Aquarium goes. Which, I gotta say, I think is gonna be an awesome feature. Let's start with the storage system, and we're gonna start by laying out all of our barrels. There's three barrels in between each pillar, and I'm gonna stack them about six high. Barrels are great because they cause zero lag. Chests, on the other hand, can seriously impact your FPS. Plus, if I'm honest, I actually prefer the look of barrels. Let's add a little bit of light around the back here and place in all those hoppers. I'm going to do both floors together, so hopefully this will save a bit of time. Okay, that's the first part all done. That already took me a few hours and we're still a long way from done. Let's craft some polished andesite for the redstone area. 
It has an outline, so it just makes it easier to see. The redstone itself is pretty simple. The blocks should be placed like this, making sure the top blocks are in line with the top hoppers. Let's extend these blocks across. Place our repeaters. Then cover up the rest. Let's place the comparators and the redstone dust. And don't forget to place the redstone torches. Now I just need to repeat this behind every hopper. So this may take a while. Let's place a hopper into the comparator for the item filter. And finally, I just need to connect a hopper line around the entire system. And of course, connect both floors. It's a good idea to place composters on top of the hoppers. This helps reduce any of the lag that they may cause. Okay, and that's all of the redstone in place now. Now for the item filter. For this, I'm just going to rename a bunch of dirt. Let's give it a very important name. Yep, subscribe. Very important. For now, I'm going to place the name dirt into the last four slots of the hoppers. I need to add 41 items of the item that I want to sort into the first slot of each hopper. But I think I'm going to go ahead and organize that later, as that's going to take a while. Before I do anything else, I think I want to get the flooring in place. Okay, let's try adding a dark oak border on each side. Let's fill the rest with spruce and then get some of the pillars in place just to see how it kind of looks. Okay, it's starting to shape up really nice now. I did get a little carried away with the building and I wasn't sure about the orange at first, but I think it works. So now I need to repeat this around the entire storage room. Well, I forgot to say that I think this is my favorite storage room design that I've ever made. The orange and spruce just work so well together. And I love having that kind of dome shape to the center of the room. Now, I do still need to organize all of the chests, but I, like I said, I'm going to do that a little bit later as that is going to take some time. Plus, I still need to do the interior downstairs and build the Axolotl Aquarium. I think it's going to look so awesome when it's done. Okay, I'm just too excited now. Let's do this. Okay, this looks really cool. It's a different style, but I'm really happy with it. The next thing I want to do is get in the aquarium. And I'll finish the ceiling once that's all in place. I will be doing the stairway as well, but let's do the aquarium first. Let's grab some sand. I'll take the axolotls and the tropical fish. I'm sure I have some coral somewhere. Aha! Well, actually, not that much. Looks like I'm going to need some more coral. I'm so sure there was a wall motion over this way. Aha, here we go. 
Now, let's grab plenty so we don't have to come back. For a while at least. So, I'm pretty well stocked now, but I'm not sure if Axolotl's despawn. So, to be safe, let's get some name tags. Seven should be plenty for now. And I think I'm going to use some names from the comments of last episode. Hopefully, we get to add them all. So, let's go with... Yura, Clovis, Tess, Tony, Rick, Grace Marie, and Drema. Now, for the aquarium, let's add some pillars. I'm not a fan of those large tanks made of just glass. I think it just looks so much better when you add a few details so they don't look so plain. Now let's clear the bottom and we'll fill it in with some sand. I kind of want like a little mountain thing in the middle. Yeah, something like that should work. It's going to look so much better once we get all the coral in place. But I'm going to need to fill in the glass and top it with water first. The coral blocks should add a nice bit of life and some awesome vibrant colors. Now, just some final details such as sea pickles, bone meal, and coral fans. And finally, let's add our axolotls. I'm so excited for this. So, we have Yura, Clovis, and Tony. Let's see if we can breed some of you guys. There's one and two. Is it going to work? Yes, we have a baby. Uh, oops. I guess they don't like fish. <laughs> or maybe they do. Sorry, fish. Oh, man, this looks so awesome. It's not too cramped either, so they can swim around pretty easily. I've also finished up the seeding, so it's looking pretty nice now. So now that's done, let's get the stairway in place. It's going to lead down here. First, I need to add some framework. And fill in the floor. I think I'm just going to follow the same pattern with the spruce and dark oak. Okay, that looks good. Let's add some more pillars. And we're filling these walls. Man, that just looks so much better. Let's copy the same design into the stairway. First, let's dig out the walls. Maybe add a pillar here. Let's fill in the rest of the walls. Again, I'm just going to bring that floor design all the way down, including the actual stairs too. Now, I want to do the same thing for the ceiling above the stairs, but maybe make the edges a little bit lower so it kind of sticks out. Yeah, something like that. Let's add some better light in. And get rid of these ones. Oh, I need some more baked potatoes. My belly's starting to grumble. There we go. So I still need to organize which items are going where in the sawing system. But overall, I absolutely love this system design. And now I've got so much room to store 250 items, which we can always expand later on, but that's going to be plenty for now. The Axolotl Aquarium is such a cool feature. I mean, I just love it. Look at these guys. I mean, it really brings this room to life. The only question remaining now is, what do we build on the outside? Gathering wood in Minecraft is so boring. So today I'm going to build a fully automatic wood factory that gathers tons of logs for me. All in hardcore Minecraft. Dude, seriously. Like, I've just pressed record. Damn, those zombies are annoying. But please subscribe. Now this tree farm is pretty awesome. And to make it even better, I'm going to cover it with a brand new epic factory building, which turns out to be one of my favorite builds yet. Now, I've already mined over 30,000 logs in this world, so this farm is going to save me so much time, which means more time for building. I think this will be the perfect spot for the factory, but I'm going to have to do something with the landscape. I mean, you guys know how much I love my terraforming, right? So yeah, more terraforming and another big hole for the farm. Building this is going to be so much easier now that we have our automatic storage all organized and in place. So let's place down our beacon. 
and let's add haste too. Okay, time to get to work. Okay, I think this will be big enough to fit our farm. Well, I hope so at least. Just trust me, I've got this. Fingers crossed. With the cliff all in place now, this area is looking awesome and definitely makes the landscape look more complete. But we'll add a few more details a little bit later. I think I probably have most of the resources for this farm, but there's definitely a few things I am going to need. Actually, that should be plenty of redstone. Yeah, I'm definitely going to need more slime. Let's go ahead and gather that up first. I'm pretty sure there's a big swamp over this way. Aha, here we go. Let's clear these trees to make some more room for the slime to spawn. Okay, nighttime is here. Aha, and we have our first slime. Give me those slime balls. Okay, from that one slime, we got 24 slime balls. Man, I need like 45 slime blocks. So, uh, yeah, this is gonna take a while. Aha, go llamas. I knew I kept those guys around for something. Well, night one was pretty intense, but we got 62 slime balls. Not as much as I would have liked, but it's a start, I guess. My gosh, there are so many of you guys. Oh, no, no, no. Uh oh. Quick, quick. Uh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That was so close. Jeez. Ooh. Well, I'm still here at least. Just about. That was a little scary, though. Not gonna lie. Okay, just over two stacks gives us 15 slime blocks. Not bad, I guess, but um, we're going to need a lot more. Okay, finally, 47 slime blocks. Yep, I think that will do the trick. Okay, next on the list is honey blocks. So first I'm going to need some bees nests. I think I have a couple back at base, but hopefully we can find a few more on the way home. Aha, I'll take that. So to be able to take the honey safely, I think we place down some campfires and place the bees nest on top. And if I'm right, I think the bees need some flowers to gather the nectar. And we all know that nectar makes honey. And we have one bee. Seriously, like one bee out of three nests? I'm so sure that I have more. Well, I guess I'm going to need more bees too. Can I convince this guy in here? Come on, buddy. Ah, never mind. They both went in here. So I'm pretty sure that's two more bees and another bee nest. Now all we need to do is simply breed them. There's one. Come on, I know there is definitely at least three bees in there now. Ah, there we go. Finally. Let's grab the honey and be our guest. Another advancement. Awesome stuff. Okay, on four bottles makes one honey block. Ah, oh, seriously, I need like 41 blocks. Man, that's going to take forever. Okay, it's probably a good idea to start organizing all the redstone items while we're waiting. Now that we can get a honeycomb, let's craft some beehives so that we can get more bees working. I'm not really sure if there's a difference between the hives and the nests, but hopefully that will speed up our honey production. And we can breed more bees now, so that should help too. Come on guys, there's no time for a break. Back to work. Okay, I think that's finally everything we need to build the farm, including plenty of honey blocks. Honestly, it would have probably been quicker to build an automatic honey farm, but I will still make one at some point. 
But now I'm just going to remove the nest and we will use them at some point to build an automatic honey farm. Anyway, we're finally ready to build, so let's do this. Well, that build was a little bit tricky, but finally it is all in place. The design is by Il Mango, and the tutorial is linked in the description if you want to check it out. Now, I did get a little visit from one of those little green guys. You know, the ones with no arms, ones that like to creep up behind you and blow things up. Yeah, like, he blew up the entire TNT duper. That's pretty much this entire section just up here, but hopefully, fingers crossed, it's all fixed now. Now, rather than having a collection area for all of the logs, I think I'm gonna just fill out all of the items into our storage system using water streams. It just makes sense, seems that our storage system is so close. First, I need to add the water down here. Ah, there we go. Let's grab some packed ice. And we should be able to make a stream all the way to the storage input. Signs are probably gonna work best here to separate the streams. Now I just need to cover the stream with gloss. Okay, let's test it out. The items flow down and all the way around. Perfect. It's probably a good idea to repair my tools as they're getting pretty worn down now. Man, these guys are just so stupid. And down goes the captain. Now, give me all of that XP. While I'm here, let's quickly grab a bunch of bones from the mob farm. Okay, that should do. Now we've repaired our tools, let's quickly repair our bow. Let's just grab this one. This one also gives us punch one and pretty much repairs our bow, so that'll do the job. And now we can turn the bones into bone meal and place them in our tree farm. Okay, first try it. Please tell me I got this right. Let's click the barrel and fingers crossed. Okay, yes, the TNT duper is working. So uh, let's give this thing a go. Okay, I had the farm running for around 20 minutes. So let's see what we got. Ooh, about 15 stacks of birch, seven stacks of oak, 12 stacks of spruce, and five stacks of jungle logs. So if we evened it out, we're probably looking around 100 stacks of logs per hour, maybe more. And we can go AFK, so I can gather logs while I catch up on some much needed sleep. Oh, I'm so excited. This is going to save me so much time. Now we need to come up with a nice factory design to cover it up. I think I'll probably build it out of bricks, but I want to add a lot of texture to make it feel really old. So I'm definitely going to need some bricks first. So I have a fair amount of clay, but I don't think it's going to be enough. And I only have a few clay balls. Wow, that actually looks like a lot more when it's all stacked up. My shovel has silk touch, so I guess I'm going to have to sell with a basic iron one for now. Man, one iron shovel down already? Maybe we should enchant this one. And I'm breaking free. That's all. Actually, I think I found a shovel when I was end raiding. Aha, I'm breaking free and efficiency four. Now that's more like it. Let's melt that all up and see how many bricks we can craft. That made more bricks than I thought, so it might be enough. I think the best way to do this is by starting with the framework so that it gives me a bit of a better idea for the shape. So let's get building. I 
think the shape looks pretty good for now. It's hard to tell how it will look, but um, yeah, just trust the process. It's gonna be awesome. Let's quickly add some floor into the entrance. I will do the interior after, but let's finish the building first. I think the back wall will likely get damaged from the TNT explosions. So let's protect it with a layer of obsidian. But looks like I'm going to need to go mine some first. Aha, here we go. Let's put some water over the lava. And with our enchantments, this shouldn't take too long. So I'm pretty sure that the back wall is the only one that needs to be protected. Hopefully, the obsidian should do the trick. Next, I just want to add a small area downstairs. Maybe like a log storage area and a way to access the farm. a small area that gives us access to the farm afk area now back to the actual building itself i think i'm just going to start by filling in all the walls of bricks for the moment I know it doesn't look the best right now, but there is still a lot of detail to add, so just trust me. First, I'm going to need some moss blocks to create a kind of old worn down look just to go in patches. I should only need a few stacks, not too much. Okay, I think that should be plenty. On the corners of the build, I'm going to add some cobblestone walls. I think they add a really nice kind of industrial look to the build. Now, the texturing for the walls is going to be done in two parts. First, I want to cover the build with some granite and a few patches of polished granite, just to give the walls a bit of a worn down look. That will give us this kind of effect. The second part is just for some odd patches. I'm going to basically use moss, coarse dirt, rooted dirt and mossy cobblestone to create this kind of overgrown look to the build. I think it looks really nice. But these will only be placed in a few patches dotted over the build. So, here goes nothing. For the windows, I'm going to use some light grey stained glass panes as they look really nice in my texture pack. I wish default Minecraft had some kind of glass panes like this, but normal glass looks good too. So it's slowly starting to take shape now, but it still needs a lot of work. Maybe add a few window ledges with some deep slate tiles. And to make this build look more industrial, I'm going to use stone brick slabs for the border of the roof. The main part of the roof is going to be with the deep state tiles, so they should look good together. The border definitely needs a bit of texture, so let's use some mossy stone bricks and cobblestone just to give it a bit more detail. There's something about adding a lot of texture to a build that really creates so much more life 
and really gives that realistic look to the build. I mean, I just love it. I really do. I think I want to use some of these patches in the roof as well, but blend it with the deep slate instead. So let's grab our deep slate and finally get this roof all in place. Okay, now it is definitely starting to look like something. I mean, this is actually looking pretty cool. I might need to add a little bit more texture, but overall, I think it's looking pretty good. Now, I'm going to need a few oxidized copper blocks or some small details, but it just takes so long to oxidize. I mean, surely there's got to be a way to do this faster. Now, the building does look awesome from this view, but I actually have a cool idea. Let's grab some smooth quartz. And I think these windows need to come down by just one block. Okay, that actually already looks much better. Now we can add an L, O, G, and S. And now we have logs. So we know where to go for our, well, logs, I guess. You know, for a factory building, this actually looks pretty awesome. I'm not usually a fan of this style, but I don't know. I love this one. So the outside is still looking a little plain and definitely needs a few final details. Plus, we still have to do the interior. But overall, I think the build is looking great. My gosh, why is this copper taking so long to oxidize? Like... I'm sure it should be doing it quicker than this. I think I'm done with all the granite and bricks for now, so they can go back in this chest here, which uh, puts them straight back into our storage, all nicely organized for us. Gotta love it. Now we need some foliage, such as acacia leaves, azalea leaves, white tulips, and maybe some dandelions. Hey, hey, finally, we have our first oxidized copper block. My gosh, that took forever. Okay, time for my favorite part, decoration. Man, I just love adding some greenery. Adding in all those flowers, trees, and bushes just makes this place feel so much more complete. I did use the copper blocks to make these sort of pipe connections on the outside. I don't know what they are, but they kind of make it look more industrial. So now we need to work on the interior. Let's start by framing out a big window that will sit just here. We'll separate the stairs with a brick wall and I'll keep the ceiling basic with some spruce planks for now. Let's fill in that big glass window and we can add a few more details around it. Do I have any shroom lights? Ah, oh, yeah, perfect. Maybe place them up here for some light in and cover them with some fence for a bit of detail. I'm going to keep the ceiling pretty simple. Maybe some stairs around the edge. Let's quickly craft some trapdoors and I'll place those in the middle. Let's craft a few stairs and slabs. And we can make a kind of crafting area here. Let's place a stone cutter, a log, and maybe a campfire on this side. 
And if we put it out, it should look like some chopped logs. Actually, let's make the table a little wider. Maybe some barrels and a few lanterns. Downstairs, we can place some logs and a few barrels just to make it look like the place is being used. And maybe a little kind of display shelf up here, showing you some of the items you can get. Let's add a door, trap door, slab, fence. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. And that's how I built an awesome wood factory with an AFK tree farm in Minecraft. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in the next one.